What's up guys, welcome back to the Video Creator Show where we talk about everything YouTube. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about kids' channels, why you should start one, why they blow up so quickly, and how much money are these kids' channels really making? So that's all in today's episode, stick around. All right, so we are talking about Kids Channels Grant, and the reason uh, I kind of brought this to everyone's attention today is because I have two young children. I have a three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, and although we try to limit their screen time as much as possible, uh, there are definitely times where we use YouTube as a way to educate our children and also entertain our children and kind of keep them busy. Uh, you know, some examples are, you know, Christmas dinner when after about five minutes, they're getting kind of rowdy in the, in the seats there. They're knocking their food over. Uh, we got like 20 people at the table. We might pull out the iPad and put on uh, Miss Rachel from a YouTube channel called Songs for Littles. Uh, and that is the main YouTube channel that we will take a look at today. And, uh, and that's one of my kids' favorites. So a little bit of background on the channel before we kind of get your reaction to it and all that kind of stuff, Grant, is that this channel was created a couple years ago. Uh, if I look at their social blade right now, Miss Rachel, it's called Songs for Littles. Uh, they have 101 uploads, and it was actually created on 2019, in February 13th, 2019. So about four years old, but um, I'm not sure when their first upload was. They got about 3.5 million subscribers, uh, 2 billion total views. Uh, but the crazy thing, and I'll go ahead and share my screen, Grant, so you can see the, the social blade right now on it, mm -hmm. is that their, their growth has been crazy. So the last month of... I guess this is March of 2023. They did 260 oh million views. Oh. Yeah, it's a lot. And and so, you know, in comparison, let's compare that to somebody like PewDiePie. So Songs for Littles, 260 million views. PewDiePie, although he's not what he used to be as far as, you know, uh, uploading all the time, 37 million views. So A piddly 37 mil. A 37 mil. I mean, he, he in his... In his best days, he did 340 mil, so oh, to his credit, wow. in a month. But uh, yeah, I mean, Songs for Littles doing 260 million uh, is pretty impressive. To put now, to, to compare it to PewDiePie is one thing, but to compare it to Mr. Beast is another, uh, who currently in the last month did 946 million views. Oh. So although 260 million uh, is a lot and very, very impressive. Just think about how crazy that is, Grant. Mr. Beast did 946 million when in December, like three or four months ago, he did 1.7 billion <sighs> views. Uh, do, do you remember what video did he release that month? That Was that the what uh, video, Mr. Was Beast? Was that the I Cured a Thousand People of Blindness? I don't know if that was in December, though. I feel like that was more recent. Yeah. Either way, uh, that's crazy. Mr. Beast definitely is the top dog. Um, so anyways, back, back to this children's channel. So the, the crazy thing about, if you don't know, uh, about children's channels is that their monetization on YouTube is a little bit different. So they, uh, because of COPA, which is, uh, you know, YouTube got sued by the FTC a few years ago because they were basically showing ads to kids and, I guess, collecting data from kids, like uh, cooking them or, or something like that. Uh, so they got sued. They got in big trouble. And ever since that, kids channels, uh, the amount of ad revenue that they're able to earn has really plummeted and, and gone down. I mean, I did some research before the podcast and and found someone that said they were getting about a dollar for every thousand views. So not the worst CPM of all time, but uh, definitely a drop. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's pretty bad. A dollar per thousand. Pretty close to the worst CPM of all yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's pretty bad. I'm just saying. Before this, I was kind of under the impression that they weren't earning any money at all. Right, I thought from that ads, too. But I don't think that's true. I think they are, but I think their CPM is like really low, like a dollar, um, because as you can see, if you go to any ki kid's video, there are ads that play on it. I think the problem is, is that these ads that play on kids' channels, they are not like a typical ad that goes to um, 
like the auction. It's kind of like an auction is the way that YouTube ads work where people are saying, okay, I'm willing to pay five cents to show my ad to somebody. And if everyone else is saying they're willing to, to, to you know, to place their ad for four cents, then the highest bidder wins. And, and that's not the case on kids' videos because they don't want a Budweiser commercial or something like that to pop up. Right. So hmm. anyways, uh, so, so, so it begs the question, all these views, a dollar per thousand views. So she's still making some pretty good money because it's so many views. But what are some ways, Grant, that people that are creating kids content can monetize their channel? What's kind of the first idea that would pop into your head? Sure. So one thing is like philosophically, kids don't have money. Like you, you got to know that. So you're essentially selling to their parents, right? Which mm -hmm. I think is overall a, a good thing, right? To not sell directly to children. So whatever you are selling, you it needs to be parent approved. So in my opinion, something that would be good, let's say you're uh, a channel like Miss Rachel or some kind of children's education channel, you could have a card game, a kind of like, uh, one's a picture of a horse and it's got the word horse and now your kid can learn what the word horse is and how to spell it. Um, it Maybe it's a kind of card game about learning the ABCs. Um, kind of a game of sorts that is educational. It has the same kind of aesthetic and art style of your YouTube channel. Uh, you know, you, you would want your kid to feel like they are uh, in some way kind of in your universe when they're playing this game. You're in Miss Rachel's universe when you're playing with this deck of cards. Um, so that that's just kind of one thing. It, like it, it would be a good Christmas gift or or something like that where it's I, I something that parents can play with their children that is relevant to the brand of the channel. Yeah, and I, I like the idea of like cards or something because I think that's better or like a board game sure. than the first thing that pops into my head is like stuff animals or, you know, something like that. Like, okay, you're selling stuff, but that's not really that great of an idea, but an easy one, I think. Um, but for me, I like to think about recurring revenue, right? Oh, subscription. Like how can we make some money doing this as a subscription? which is hard. I mean, the, the product would be a lot more challenging. So, you know, one idea is, you know, there's a, something called ABC Mouse. You ever heard of ABC Mouse, Grant? Mm -hmm. no. no. So uh, growing up, you probably did something like, uh, what's it called? Like Reader Rabbit or like, you know, as you sure. grow the Oregon Trail, like there's these games mm -hmm. as you go up that kind of educate you and teach you how to read. And ABC Mouse is kind of a platform like that where you pay like a nine ninety nine a month. You get you get access to some memberships area where there's these little games that your kids can play that teach them math or or whatever. So I think the ultimate would be to create something like that, like an app or some sort of membership area where people could parents could pay ten dollars, and now it's not just a YouTube video from Miss Rachel, but it's actually like a lesson plan and 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 you're learning, or it's a game. Um, so I think that that's all good stuff right there. Like anything that could be recurring or like a monthly crate, like a box that comes once mm -hmm. a month to your house that has all kinds of toys. Um, because the cool thing about kids is like one month of their life is a lot, you know? So like for my kids, like maybe not every month, but like we rotate toys, you know, like as soon as my, uh, one year old is one and a half. Well, we need to start teaching them shapes or, you know, there's a, there's a way to, you need to level up, right? As soon as they become six years old, you're teaching them, you know, maybe multiplication or addition, you know? And so like, you got to keep leveling up maybe. So something like a crate every six months or something like that, I think could be cool. Um, but, but you said it, Grant, you're selling to the parents, right? So that leads me to my next question. And I know you don't watch a, bu a bunch of these kind of videos and stuff, but I'll just let you know. There's not a lot of calls to actions in these videos because you're, you know, it's little kids, you know. And when we say little kids, we're talking like ages one to five, right? I'm not talking about a 10-year-old or a nine-year-old really. I'm talking about young kids. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you get the parents to purchase? I mean, the easiest way would probably be to get your kid so excited that they want to ask their parents and I don't know, maybe, mm -hmm. I mean, see, this is weird. Like I, I don't have <laughs> kids and it, I feel like you can get 
manipulative pretty easily with this in like a, a very bad way. So I, you have a catchy little jingle and uh, you have your kids parrot that to your parents. But I, is that evil? I don't know. Um, <laughs> like I, I have plenty of ideas. I just don't know if they're moral ideas um, of how to like get your kid so excited that they want to parrot something to their their parents like. Um, I, I guess it's like the normal marketing idea, right? Uh, so even the board game Life, when I was a kid, I thought it was great. And I swear their slogan was like, Life, the game of life. Like something kind of dumb, but obvious. Um, and I would kind of go around saying that. And, you know, my parents bought me the board game and we played it and it was great. Um, and I think that sort of catchy little jingle was... Part of the reason why we had it, I probably would have bought it anyway, honestly. But a jingle, um, go with the jingle. That's that's where my head's at right now. Hey there, you probably know the Video Creator Show is brought to you by VidChops.com. What is VidChops.com? Well, it is an editing service that will take the horrible burden of editing off your back. We all know video editing. It's tedious. It takes forever. But what if... You had a professional who did it for you. You go to sleep, you wake up, it's done. Wouldn't that be magical? Vidchops.com. Hire a professional, save yourself time and energy, and take your YouTube channel to the next level. Yeah, I like that a lot. You know, at the end of your video, a quick little jingle, because the thing about it is you don't need to be as explicit. I feel like, you know, in our videos and stuff, we're like at the end of the video, hey, and if you want da -da -da, click the link in the description, da -da -da -da. like you don't have to do that. And I don't think you should do that. I, I like the idea of a jingle at the end of the video because the parents are, are sitting there too. Maybe they're not like locked in watching it. Um, although sometimes you're just sitting there just to take a breath while your mm -hmm. children are watching it. Uh, and you are watching it as well. But yeah, the parents do see it. And so uh, I think they would, you know, eventually maybe click a link in the description on their own without like a straight call to action. So, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, anytime a kid's asking, you know, dad, dad, can we get the app or whatever, you know, the, the cards, you know, that's going to help a lot too without having to manipulate anybody. Um, but, but yeah, I think, I, from, from my experience, I'm not seeing these YouTubers ask people to click subscribe. They're not asking for likes and comments. A lot of times comments are turned off. Um, on Do you think this is by design? Like why are these kids channels avoiding doing that? I think because they are just realizing that it's just a little kid watching and I don't know, honestly, I don't know why, because you look at, uh, this, this songs for littles, right? They have two or 3.6 million subscribers. So I think eventually parents are just sick of maybe having to search up the name. So they're like, let me just hit subscribe so it'll show me all the latest videos or something like that. Or let me hit subscribe so I don't forget about this channel. Um, but I don't think it's the kids going in there and, and hitting subscribe and all that. And I, I think that's why they don't ask. Um, just because, I don't know. I don't know why, honestly. Hmm. It's a good mm. question, though. I think I think it would be effective. I th I would recommend it if someone came to me and they're like, "Hey, I'm going to start this kids channels. Should I ask these kids to like and subscribe?" I would say, "Yeah, why not?" You know, it's it, if the parents are allowing them to watch YouTube, then they're going to sooner or later learn how YouTube works and learn about sub subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And asking someone to, sub to subscribe to a channel that has no bad content on it and it's all educational, I think is only a good thing. Um, and yeah, like me personally, like I've, I've wanted to start a kid's channel for years. I kind of, all it sounds weird, but I always kind of like wanted to be like a Mr. Rogers type. Like I've always looked at Mr. Rogers and what he did. If you don't know who he is, if you're young, then he uh, had like a show on cable TV where he, you know, it was just a children's show and he'd read books and stuff, but he really cared a lot about the mental health of children. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of his main thing and he, like telling them that he loves them and all that kind of stuff. And I just always thought that was cool because I know there are so many kids out there that don't have very good parents. And like Mr. Rogers kind of was their role model. And I always thought that that would be cool to be that person. Um, 
and make a living doing that by, you know, it's a positive impact type thing. Uh, as soon as Copa cut the ad revenue and stuff, though, I was like, okay, I don't know if this is like, <laughs> you know, I don't know if this is like uh, something that I could really hang my hat on and do as a career now. So it was kind of out for me. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I know I'm kind of rambling. Has there ever been a moment where you have ran across a kid's channel or seen a kid's channel and like thought to yourself, um, like, whoa, I did not know that they were that that big. Uh, I mean, so since the whole Copa thing, I think YouTube sort of split in two, right? There's normal YouTube and then there's kids YouTube. So nowadays I haven't really seen kids content. However, um, back in like 2017 before the split, I did see those Spider-Man and Elsa videos where, um, they, they would like, I, who these people were exactly, I still don't entirely know. But there was this channel where they would dress up as popular characters. So Spider-Man, Elsa from Frozen, uh, whoever. And then they would just do the wackiest, stupid, they would just be humping each other and like singing horrible songs. And like it was mind poison that children would watch endlessly. They would just see their favorite characters doing whatever and these children would just watch it um and it was mind-blowing how popular that was so it, not pertinent today but um i don't know kids are weird they'll just like latch on to things and, and watch them i guess they just have a lot of time so but nowadays i mean i don't know i don't I wish well, I had a better answer for you. Well, well let me let me cut you off there because I, I know one kids channel you have heard of, and that's Coco Melon. Sure, yeah, I've okay. heard of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so Coco Melon, right? Is uh, it's just a kids channel that was cr created by some kind of like animation studio or something called Moonbug. They have a bunch of different channels, uh, but Coco Melon, I think is the second largest channel on YouTube. So uh, I got it right in front of me right here, 157 million subscribers. So 157 million, that puts them third uh, as far as subscriber rank goes. They're second as far as most uh, video views on YouTube. Um, and they have 884 videos and they created their channel in 2006, right? Wow. So they, yeah, so oh that's God. like the year YouTube started. Um, so, so they've been around forever and I mean, in, in that many years, 884 uploads is not that many, but, uh, in the last 30 days, now think about this, 2.5 billion views in the last 30 days. Cool. So yeah. And they're doing that every month. Okay. They're, you know, that month, 2.5 billion, the, the month before 2.5 billion, 2 billion, th uh, 3 billion, you know, there's even a month within the past year where they were 3.3 billion I'm, on their social blade. I'm seeing one 4.6 billion views in a month. So they're doing crazy, crazy stuff. And, and they get a lot of criticism too, because their content isn't quote unquote, um, educational, like, Miss Rachel songs for littles, like she's literally teaching toddlers how to speak. And I think she her her child, um, had a speech impediment. She herself was a speech pathologist or something like that, as well as ran a preschool. And so she, uh, thought it was only right to, you know, create a, a children's channel that helps them speak. And, um, my oldest son has watched that stuff forever. And he's, for uh, a child with Down syndrome speaks pretty well for a three-year-old and we know for a fact that he has learned a lot from that channel because he can say That's open awesome. and stuff like that yeah and so we, we feel value like we're appreciative of the stuff she puts out and um, we know that it's helped him and like when it comes to like feeling guilty as a parent for putting something on for your kid right like my wife is like take off Coco Melon put on Miss Rachel, you know, like, and, and we feel better about it. Uh, but really what Coco Melon is, is, is just children's songs. So it's like, you know, wheels on the bus. It's, it's all this stuff. I've, I've seen people criticize them, um, saying, Oh, all they try to do is keep the attention by cutting every two seconds. They make a cut, you know, and like it's poison, but I don't think it really is poison. I think it's just kind of like us growing up watching Saturday morning Rugrats and, uh, you know, mm. just car just cartoons that just don't really teach you anything. That's kind of like what it is to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I like you seem fine with Coco Melon. Your wife doesn't seem to appreciate Coco Melon. Um, like, do you feel that being a kids channel, like you're always gonna be better off trying to be wholesome? Like, it seems Coco Melon is sort of morally neutral or something. They're just kind of making entertainment. Um, but do you feel like you're always going to have a better relationship with your audience, with, specifically with kids' channels, if you're doing something educational or more Mr. Rogers style, where it's like you're talking about divorce and it's not your fault and it's kind of really deep things that are helpful. Um, do you feel like that is always going to be good or can you kind of just make these morally neutral things that are kind of entertaining? And I mean, obviously it works with Coco Melon, but like um, they also have a first mover advantage. I mean, they've been around forever. Like, could you still succeed with something like that today? Um, or do you think that you have to kind of win parents over now if you're starting a new channel? Unfortunately, I think you can do whatever you want and it'll work because so many parents don't care. They're just going to put an iPad or a TV in front of their kids and just let it play. Mm -hmm. And Coco, they're just going to throw Coco Melon on and, and not care. Uh, and that's because I just think there's that many bad parents out there, unfortunately. But so I think both will work. But I think taking I think parents are, though, for the most part, aware of attention spans, screen time, you know, what are you feeding your kid? What kind of content are you feeding your kids? There, I think more parents are aware of that. So um, the safe bet, I think, would be to, you know, educate, add value, do, you know, kind of go down that road, I, I think is definitely the, the safer bet. Um, but yeah, here's, here's some crazy stuff too about, about Miss Rachel and her channel. I like in preparing for this, I looked through a few of her YouTube descriptions. Not a single affiliate link, not a link mm -hmm. to her website. She probably doesn't even have a website. Um, well, she does actually, but she's not selling anything. She's not creating any kind of products. I really like want to call her up and be like, hey, you know, I, I can help you um, monetize this channel and not in an evil way, but in a way where like you can literally create some better content and help kids even more. Like imagine, you know, hosting Zoom calls where you can get on calls with kids and help them or whatever, you know, there's just, there's ways for her to offer more value. But my guess is that she's just rolling in the dough right now because I just did a little bit of math and 260 million views. If you're getting a, a $1 CPM, so $1 for every thousand views is $260,000 in a month. Oh, so that yeah, was her who YouTube needs merch? Yeah. Who needs merch? Who needs products? Who needs all that kind of stuff? Um, but 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 who knows? I mean, she's come a long way. Like her, she hasn't been getting that many views forever. But um, okay, dang, it's, it's crazy though. It's crazy to think how much views these channels get. I mean, Coco Melon has taken a different route. They have fully monetized. I mean, Coco Melon is now has dolls. They you know they're in Walmart. You can go to a Walmart and find Coco Melon merch and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> of um, course, yeah. And they do tours, right? So you can go to oh. a Coco Melon show and oh, wow. go to some, you know, big arena and do like almost like Coco Melon on ice type, type <laughs> shows. <laughs> um, They've got it all figured out. Yeah. So they're, they're, I mean, I don't know who owns that company there, but they're monetizing the hell out of that thing. And, uh, and the other channel that I wanted to bring up in this children's space is one called Blippy. Have you ever heard of Blippy? Blippy? No, is that like Clippy's cousin? Possibly, because I don't know who Clippy is. But the the famous paperclip of Microsoft <laughs> fame. Oh, I definitely Windows know who XP. that is. Yeah, no. So Blippy is um, kind of a Mister Rogers type. What he does is he will just go to all kinds of different places. He'll go to. Um, I don't know, a fire station like after hours or something like that. And they'll shoot a video. Oh, look, a fire truck, fire truck, squirt water, you know, and it's, it's a little bit educational or whatever. Um, but yeah, he's got 619 uploads on his channel and 14 billion views, 17 million subscribers. He created his channel in 2014. Uh, in the last month, he got 168 million views. Uh, and, you know, kind of the, the biggest month he's had in the past year 
uh, is about 330 million views. Wow. Yeah, so he's he's his his views are crazy. He's got a show. He's on Netflix now. He also has a tour that goes around the world um, and does shows. He has uh, a cartoon, I think. He has, uh, and the crazy Dang. thing, and, and the crazy thing is, he's actually gotten out of it now. So if uh, Grant can see my screen, if you're listening, you can't mm-hmm. see it. But this is Blippy here, and this is Blippy's clone, not the same person. <laughs> What it was so is this like um, Joe from Blues Clues replacing Steve? Is this the same idea? Exactly, but he goes by the same name, Blippy. But you just they look similar. I see. Um, but yeah, so he's kind of like removed himself, so he's not even in the videos and stuff anymore. But this guy uh, has fully fully monetized and um, yeah, like has has gone kind of I don't know mainstream I guess. Wow. So, Blippy, my man. Yeah, Blippy and, and, and it's a, a new guy that my my children do enjoy watching as well now mm-hmm. that we let them watch. Um so anyways, if you're listening to this right now and you're considering starting a children's channel, here's a couple strategies. Okay? So I'm going to dive into a few strategies now. Um the first strategy is a common one that you can use on any YouTube channel, but I'm starting to see it more and more on these children's one, and that is creating compilation videos. So here's what I'm talking about, Grant. I'm talking about you have a weekly release schedule. After a year, you got 50 videos. Let's say 10 of those videos are about a specific topic. You put them all together into one hour-long video. It's a compilation video of some sort. The topic is whatever the topic is that they're all related to. And then you publish that video. Have you ever seen that strategy on any channels? Sure. Yeah, I, I've definitely seen that. Never for kids' channels, but I. It seems like it would be lucrative and like a good idea. Like you're kind of taking the best moments and condensing them into a single video. And it seems like especially for kids' channels, that would be a good idea. Yeah, because kids can't aren't clicking around to the next video and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you're right about that. And the reason that people do create these compilations, I mean, I've created them on my basketball channel back in the day, is for that watch time. You know, and, and they do well. They, they really do do well. I, when I look at people's channels that do this, a lot of times these are their most popular, most viewed videos. Um, and they're literally just the same videos they've already published, just kind of comp- compiled together. Um, but so it's an interesting tactic and one that you might want to consider. And Kind of the reason I wanted to do this episode today is uh, one of my acquaintances, friends, I don't know, Facebook friend, I guess is what you can call him. Uh, He is a YouTuber. He's a juggler. And uh, he has a great channel, a lot of followers online and stuff, trick shot, juggler type guy. But his wife uh, just started a children's channel. And she came out with one video so far, and it is an hour long. And it, it seen, although it's her first video, so it's not a compilation of past videos, it, you guess it basically is. You know, she's going from, you know, wheels on the bus to, you know, that being over and starting up, you know, oh, these are shapes. And then that kind of ends. And then, okay, now we're talking about colors and then numbers and then whatever. It has like a main theme to it. But um, here's kind of the results. Okay, so this is a brand new, brand new channel. It's called Cassie's Corner, uh, and it's an hour-long video, and it re- was released 12 days ago, and she got 40,000 views on the first video. Cool. So there you go. I mean, I think that's that's great start, right? I mean, who, would, who wouldn't want 40,000 views on your first video? Um, so anyways, it's a, it's a good strategy. I think her channel, I'm pretty confident, is going to have a lot of success. And the cool thing about these children's channels is a lot of times they're just somebody in front of a green screen, you know, and then having like some stock footage. Like you're talking about lions. Well, you have stock footage of lions behind you. Talking about shapes, you got some shapes behind you. And I read an article about Miss Rachel um, and she creates all of these videos, maybe not now, but uh, the point of this article, in a one-bedroom apartment in New York City. Uh, where it's her, her husband, her daughter, and they have a green screen in the living room where they just use their iPhone and they create all these videos. So it's, it's, it goes to show that you really is no excuses when it comes to, to creating videos. Hmm. So she's still living like that or she started it like that? I, I, I think she, at the time of the article came out, which is probably about a year ago, I think she was still living like that. Yeah. But I think at this point she's 
maybe moved on, maybe got a bigger place. Who knows? I mean, it's New York City. I mean, maybe she's happy mm-hmm. there. Um, but she's, Now she's paying 200000 a month for a two-bedroom apartment. Exactly. And she's a Broadway kind of singer, you know, kind of actress, that, mm-hmm. that kind of um, thing. And so she is good. You know, she can sing well. She, you know, her, her stuff is good. Um, but yeah, she'll go to a playground and stuff every now and then too and switch it up. But, hmm. but a lot of times just green screen um, in the living room. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and move on and talk a little bit about uh, like why do you think these channels, Grant, get so many views? Because I, this is not normal like for YouTube channels, right? Like these kind of views and mm-hmm. stuff are insane. Why do you think that is? Well, the biggest reason is kids have a lot of time. And I think kids are also very obsessive, more so than adults. So when you combine these two things, like having a lot of time and a sort of obsessive nature, you get these channels that get huge amounts of views. So um, somebody like a kid who finds Blippi and they're just they like his vibe. They're they're into Blippi. They like the Blippi verse and they will continue to watch Blippi. For literally, like, I would get obsessed with, uh, uh, like, there was a movie Milo and Otis when I was a kid. I watched it, like, 20 times, you know, (laughs) and I had all the time to do it. I was just head over heels in love with this movie. And so I, I just think if kids find your channel and you're making something that's legitimately good, then you're just more likely, I think, to kind of accumulate super fans. And then, especially once you reach a certain critical mass, um, then more kids are going to find you. And even as children age out of being within your audience, because you're already so popular, new kids are going to find you and they're going to keep watching and sort of uh, getting really into your your videos um, because there's just something about them. So, yeah, I, I think it's really the obsessive nature, the spare time, um, and even maybe the simplicity too. I feel like it's probably easier to write and entertain for children than it is for adults. In some ways, I, you know, I, I don't want to like say it's easy, but I I think there's a simplicity to it, right? You don't need to write some complex philosophy to blow someone's mind and tell them like to tell a kid something they've never heard before isn't that hard. Uh, but to tell an adult that is pretty difficult on a regular basis. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you're just press and record and seeing wheels on the bus, you know, <laughs> yeah. no offense, no offense to any children's channels, but like, yeah, that, that, like, that's a video. Like your most popular video was literally probably something that where you just saying, you know, Humpty Dumpty, which just off the top of the head, you didn't have to think about it. And, and that's your most viewed video. So I do agree with that. And I'd also agree with the fact that it's the repeat viewers, right? Like, so for me, like when I'm watching YouTube, you know, I might, if I, there's a video I really, really like, I might, I might watch it a second time, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe, but like on these kids channels, like, I don't know, my kids probably racked up wheels on the bus at least 500 times at this point, you know, like it's a daily thing. So that's true too. Like, like multiple repeat viewers, uh, I think is also a huge factor. So, um, it just goes to show you too, how many kids are out there, you know, I mean, Coco Melon, that's ridiculous. Like, what did I say? 2.7 billion views in a month. Like how many people are even in this country? Like four, four billion uh, in the U S I think it's like 300 million. It's not even a billion. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, it's crazy to think to like what these companies would be valued at, you know, like some people do sell their YouTube channel and stuff. I've seen it happen. I couldn't even imagine the value of, of, of a Coco Melon channel or even this Miss Rachel channel now. I mean, um, she's, she's really blowing up. She's on the Today Show. She's, she's been all over the place. Um, so it's, it's been cool to see because she's doing, she's doing good work. She is a Mr. Rogers. You know, she is mm. doing what's best for the kids. And um, from what I see, she knows her stuff too. Like my wife is really into – speech and that and that kind of stuff and she always kind of vouches like she's using oh this strategy or she's using this strategy um so that's cool um okay so let's let's do a little bit of 
a comparison between starting a kid's channel and starting, let's say, a gaming channel? What, what would you say has bigger potential? Because the gaming industry is, is huge. It's, it's the biggest industry in the entertainment industry. I think uh, books, movies, TV shows, if you combined all that, it still would not be as big as the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Like, w since I don't know much about gaming channels, like, what are some gaming channels that you've seen that have, like, had some major views and stuff in comparison to this? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, I would say gaming has a higher ceiling. Like, it's the, – the ceiling is going to make you more money, generally speaking, than for a kid's channel. Like, it's at least – at the very least going to be more complicated to monetize uh, a kid's channel, as we've discussed. Yeah. Um, so, in general, I would say a gaming channel is a better idea. However, I think there's a lot more competition with gaming. Um, the, the one thing that I think is is currently happening in the gaming sphere is there's not much innovation. Like you're – it's kind of stale. Like everybody who is already established is kind of doing their thing. There's people who are trying to copy the established people. Um, but like it's been a while since I saw a gaming video and I was like, wow, I've never seen that before. Um, I think YouTube in general is kind of going through this. We kind of talked about this in our last episode. But um, yeah, I, I think a gaming channel is a better idea. But I think a kid's channel, um, you would probably, you know, if you have some talent and a good idea um, and some dedication, you would probably see more results more easily, um, which I think would be very motivating. So, you know, I, I'd say if doing a kid's channel speaks to you, um, I, I would probably recommend doing that just because, um, you know, as long as you can figure out a way to kind of build it into a business in a way that is, you know, good for kids still and not exploitive, uh, then you're just, I think it's going to be easier to get noticed. Um, cause yeah, gaming is, it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could go on a whole tangent here, but I, I would say, uh, gaming has a higher ceiling, but kids' channels, I mean, clearly the ceiling is high. I just think it's way harder to get, uh, um, it's harder to monetize it. Yeah. No, I agree. Because, like, like you're, you're dealing with kids, right? They don't have the credit card. They can whip out and, and buy your merch or whatever. Yeah. And, and also the whole ad revenue thing, too. So it, it definitely, it's, it's the harder way to monetize for sure. I think getting, as far as getting views... I think it's a lot easier. I mean, we, we looked at that one channel, one first video, 40,000 views. And I bet you 10 bucks, man, that if as long as they keep uploading to that channel it, it, with these hour-long videos, I would say like twice a month, within a year, man, they're going to be doing like 10 million a month or 20 million. Who knows? Like it, we already looked right. at some others. It, like, but I, yeah. I, I'm confident that that channel, it will succeed, especially since the first one got 40,000 views, which... It's crazy, man. I, as most people know, I, your first video on YouTube is normally just straight crickets. Like, you know. Zero. Zero views. We're talking under 100, though. Like, realistically, like 50 to 100, I think, is where you'd, you'd be at. Um, and so, anyways, the algorithm's already promoting it out. And that's because of the watch time, I'm sure. And if, if they stick with the idea of hour-long videos, whew. Their, their watch time, their average view duration on their channel is going to be super high. So that's going to help in the algorithm um, for sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. And I mean, the key is the monetization. I think you should look at this like you should look at, you know, like SpongeBob or something like that. Like they, it's beyond just the show. It's beyond just the video. Like it's all about the toys. It's about the premium content. It's about towels with spongebob on it it's about being in walmart you know creating a brand that's going to be big enough to reach the masses outside of youtube just like blippy has done blippy and coco melon i mean you like i said you can go to walmart and buy those toys so um maybe that's the ultimate goal if you do have a kids channel as far as creating a business out of it uh but uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of upfront work and Blippy, you know, he started his 2014. So that's like almost 10 years now that he's been at it. Um, but at this point he's, he's probably pretty happy, uh, with the impact that he's made and the money that he's made too. So. 
Mm -hmm. I bet. Blippy, nailing it. I love the name too. He's he really killed it with that. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great name, great branding that he has, and just a great idea and a, a great business that he's able to kind of outsource the work now to other actors and stuff. Um, but it is just like Blue's Clues, right? So if you've kind of in your 30s, you probably remember Blue's Clues. Uh, that was just a guy in front of a green screen, kind of same thing. Um, and I could see a Blue's Clues type channel on YouTube doing very well. So anything else, Grant, that you'd like to add to the conversation today? Mm, just I, I do feel that kids' channels are probably underutilized. It's probably good that way. Like, I don't know, if you're listening to this and, you know, you want to try to sell Cheetos to children, then maybe don't start a kids' channel. But it seems to be easier to get noticed in that area of things, especially since COPPA and, you know, kind of YouTube splitting in two. So, yeah, I, I feel there's a lot of, like, value in making a kid's channel if you are able to figure it out and are kind of willing to work within the parameters that are, that have been set by the, the U.S. government. And as long as you're able to do that, um, especially, you know, with your friend getting 40 grand of or 40,000 views with their first video, unheard of. Um, I mean, that just goes to show you. I think, like, I'd say if you want to do it, you got the inspiration, um, do it, do it. Yeah. And if you are kind of a little interested after listening to this episode, then go do your research. Go look around at some kids' channels because I've done it a lot for many, many years. I'm talking many years. Uh, I have looked at kids' channels and they always seem to have these billions of views. I'm not joking. Like they always seem to have billions of views. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Hopefully you uh, found a little bit of value in today's episode and hopefully you will go and check out some kids' channels on your own. Uh, remember, this podcast is sponsored by vidchops.com, which allows you to add an expert video editor to your team in just a few clicks. So if you want to do that, head over to vidchops.com and we will see you guys in the next episode.